The Romance of the Rancho. San Gabriel, 1826. Americans cross desert to California. San Jose, 1827. Americans face arrest by Mexican governor. Vancouver, 1827. Americans escape Indian massacre at Umpqua. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a weekly dramatization of the colorful characters and events which make the history of our Southland so fascinating. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns to tell us another tale of adventure and romance. The offices of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles are one of the many places where United States defense bonds and stamps are on sale. The company urges that wherever you buy defense bonds and stamps, that you buy as many as you can, as often as you can. That is the way that America can answer the challenge of its enemies in the strongest language possible, with guns and bombs. It is the way that we can all back up our armed forces, do our part, in the protection of our homes and our way of living. Make it a regular, systematic program to invest your dimes and dollars in democracy. Now here to tell us the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, señoras y señores. Our story tonight concerns a great man, one of the true unsung heroes of the West, a pathfinder who has only recently been accorded recognition for the great part he played in opening up the West and California to the American pioneers. Here is the true life story of Jedediah Smith, a story full of adventure and excitement and rich in the romance of the ranchos. This story might well begin with an eulogy to a beaver hat, for few people realize how great an influence that style of wearing the skin of a beaver in the form of a hat had to do with the rapid expansion of these United States. In 1820, California was a remote Mexican province accessible only by sea. Explorers had beaten a trail north to the Columbia River and south through Mexico, but still there was a great expanse of unexplored country as large as most nations inhabited only by wild beasts and savage Indians. Across this formidable barrier, the westward expansion of the Americans would not have pushed into California, for another generation at least, had it not been for the lonely fur trappers. And the first of these was Jedediah Strong Smith. Jed Smith was born at Bainbridge, New York, about the year 1798. By the time he was 20, he had acquired an education above the average for a young man of the frontier, and he shipped as clerk aboard a freight boat plying the Great Lakes. It was there he met the fur trappers and listened to their tales. Sure, it's as true as I'm telling you. That there valley was alive with beavers. Millions of the critters. Yes, sir, there's a fortune to be had up in that country. Sam, how do you get to be a fur trapper? Uh, uh, What's that? Are you aiming to be a trapper? Well, sure, why not? Sounds like just what I'm looking for. Adventure, excitement, doing something. Yeah? Well, it ain't no life for a fellow that's squeamish about getting hurt or killed. Oh, I'm not worried about danger. All your stories about the Indians and bears and stuff, they don't scare me none. How do I get to be a trapper? Well, I guess the best way'd be to hire yourself off to St. Louis. That there's a jumping off place. Then that's where I'm going, Sam. Yes, sir, I'm a gonna do things. <laughs> Jedediah Smith quit his job, journeyed to St. Louis, and joined the company of trappers under William Henry Ashley. Before long, the courageous young man had shown his mettle to Ashley and was acknowledged leader in the company. It was during this period that one day, as he was leading a file of men through the wilderness above the Missouri... Jed! Jed! Yeah? What's the matter, Turner? You hear something crashing through the brush? Hold up a minute! Oh! Oh, there! 
There, you hear? Sounds like something big. Yeah, a grizzly, most likely. But he's coming mighty close. They usually steer clear. He must be hopping mad. You think he'd attack us? I don't know. I Look, don't... there it is. Jumping Jupiter. He's big as a mountain. Look out, man. He's got blood in his eye. Hold the horse, right Jed, come back here. Look out, Jed. Jed, he's coming at you. Jed, look out. The bear's got him down in town to pieces. Get in there, men. Help him. Shoot. Get him. That's it. Got him. Now in there, men. Come on. Get, get us from under. Oh, Jed. Jed, are you all right? Glory be. Look at his head. That bear near scalp. Jed. Jed, can you hear me? John. Did I get him? Yeah, you got him with your knife first, and then the men shot him. Uh, how do you feel? Oh, all right, I guess. How about the others? Nobody hurt, except you. Yeah, I guess I'm banged up a little, huh? Yeah, your head. Looks like he took your whole head in his mouth. Yeah, he did. Well, come on. Which one of you can sew a few stitches? We've got to be getting on. <laughs> Overcoming injuries that would have crippled a weaker man, Jed Smith was soon on his feet and continuing with his duties. He was one of the first white men to see the valley of the Great Salt Lake. He is thought to have discovered the Great South Pass, which furnished the gateway to the northwest for all the immigrant trains which flowed westward in the following years. But it was in the spring of 1826 that he started his greatest adventure. All of the trapping parties under Ashley gathered for their annual rendezvous at the Great Salt Lake. It was there that Ashley announced his decision to quit the fur business and retire. And it was there that a new company was formed. Yes, sir. Smith, Jackson, and Sublette. That's us. And I suppose you're going to revolutionize the fur business. <laughs> it's right, because we're going to branch out. We're going to find new supplies and, what's more, new markets. Dave Jackson and Bill Sublette are going to head up the territory we already have. I'm going to strike out for new pastures. Yeah, well, of course, I know we're always looking for new supplies of furs, but... This new market, uh, what do you mean by that? Just what I said. There's a market for us in China and across the sea. We're going to find our way to the coast so as we can ship direct. You don't mean overland to the coast. That's just what I mean. Not only that, but overland to California. That's a country I want to see. There's going to be plenty of beaver there. But there ain't nobody ever made it overland. Nobody's tried. But I'm going to. Why, man, you're just plumb crazy. That's a thousand miles through God knows what kind of country. It makes no difference. John, Americans are coming further west every day. They're spreading out, multiplying, taking up more room. And they ain't going to stop till they get to the ocean, the Pacific. All they need is somebody to show them the way. Yeah, and that's what I'm going to do. And so in 1826... Jedediah Smith started on the journey that was to earn him the title of Pathfinder of the Sierras. With a company of 17 men, he set out on the Great Salt Lake, heading southwest into the great expanse of unknown desert that lay on the path to California. California, a half-mystic land they'd vaguely heard about. Days and weeks they traveled through the wilderness, over the barren dry plains, through wild and towering mountains, each day discovering new landmarks, rivers, mountains, and valleys, Wonders never be both seen by the white men. Always there was a threat of mishap, a fall over a precipitous cliff, the attack of a wild animal, Indians. Both men and beasts suffered from hunger and thirst. Many times the way seemed too hard, too dangerous, futile. But they kept on. Finally, they reached a Mojave Indian village on the banks of the Colorado River, near what is now the town of Needles. There they found a guide to take them into the promised land of California. Across the parched desert, they slowly plowed their way, through or near the Cajon Pass, across desert lands, and then into the cool green paradise that was California. Jedediah, this is heaven. Heaven after what we've been through. Jed, just look at these fields where they're really cultivated. There's vineyards, orchards, corn. I ain't seen nothing like this place, well, since I was a kid back in New England. It's a beautiful country, all right. Well, we must be getting pretty close to some habitation. Yeah, looks like it. Must be... Ed, look, huh? engines. It's an ambush. Uh, uh, yeah. Watch out, men. Engines. Hey, wait a minute. They're just standing looking at us. They're not going to attack. There's something funny about this. Jed, look, a man or something. Holy smoke, Jed. Looks like a monk. He's probably one of the Romans. The Spanish priest. Yeah, that's what. 
Uh, welcome, my sons. Do not fear these Indians, for they will not harm you. They are fine, peaceful children. Yeah? And who, may I ask, are you? Father Sanchez of the Mission San Gabriel. Mission? See, si, this is our land. The mission buildings are close by. You look as though you had traveled far. Yes, yeah, from the Great Salt Lake. Mm, I do not believe I know that. But you are foreign uh, Americanos, are you not? That's right. We've just come across a thousand miles to the east on a trapping expedition. And we came here for supplies and rest. Oh, of course. Come, the mission is yours. And we are your servants. Come, all of you, and welcome. <laughs> Sanchez, I I hardly know how to thank you. The way you've welcomed us, fed my men, even given us cloth for clothes, badly needed as they were. It is nothing, my son. We have plenty here. I should say you have. This is indeed a land of plenty. I wouldn't mind how long we stayed here. But I am afraid that you cannot stay for long, my son. Hmm? I am sorry. I have not attempted to speak of this until, well... Until you were rested from your terrible journey, but... Well, what is it? Our government in this country has a law against the entry of any foreigners. You and your men are liable to arrest and imprisonment. But we've done nothing. I know, but it is the law. I should advise you to go to the governor at San Diego. Tell him your story and gain his permission to go peaceably back the way you came. Otherwise, I, I cannot say what may be your fate. <laughs> And so while his men rested at the hospitable Mission San Gabriel, Jedediah Smith journeyed to San Diego to see Governor Echandia. After several days of arguments, the young American was ushered into the official's presence. Senor Smith, my government is not pleased with your illegal entrance into the province of Alta California. Well, I'm sorry. Your Excellency, I meant no harm. I don't see how we could do you any harm if we meant to. That is beside the point. You are here now, and the question is what to do with you. Well, we fully intend to return to our own country as soon as we're rested. We have no intention of staying here. Well, you shall not. You shall leave as soon as possible. Well, that's all right, but I'd like to take a more northern route back. You go up to the northern part of the province and cut across the mountains from there. No. You shall go back the same way you came. But your Excellency... That is the quickest way for you to get out of the country. That is the way you shall take. But, sir, that... That is final. You may consider yourself fortunate, senor. Had it not been for the intervention of the Americano ship captains whose boats are here at present, and the fact that you were in a desperate condition when you arrived in California to seek supplies, you would not be so generously treated. No matter how I may personally feel, senor, law is law. And I advise you to take your men out of California as fast as possible, or I may not be inclined to trust you further. <laughs> Governor H. Andia realized, if others did not, the tremendous implications of Jedediah Smith's triumph in finding a route from the east into California. It meant that no longer would the remote Mexican province be a world apart, safe from intrusion by enterprising Americans. Anxiously he waited as Jedediah Smith returned to his men at San Gabriel and prepared to leave the country. He breathed easier when word came that the Americans had bade farewell to their hosts, the Padres, and driven their pack train up through Cajon Pass. But what the governor did not know was that at the head of the pass, Jedediah Smith called his men to a halt. Hold up, men! Oh. Oh. All right, men, we'll make camp here. Get something to eat and get ready to march fast. Here's where we turn off. Turn off, Jed? Well, what do you mean? We head out of here due north. North? Well, that ain't the way we come. That heads us right back into California. That's right. We're going to see a little more of this country before we're through, and we're going to find another way to get here. Another route over the mountain. But, Jed, if they catch us... Sure, they'll put us in jail, I suppose. But we'll get out. Anybody wants to quit, just say so. You're welcome. All right, then. Now, we got a job to do, and nobody's going to stop us from doing it. From here, we're heading north. Let us suppose that you're interested in buying a home. You see a house and lot that you like. 
you decide to buy it. You consult your real estate broker. He has it listed as belonging to Mr. Jones. But how do you know that Mr. Jones actually owns it? How can you tell what rights or claims or interests in that house and lot may belong to some other individual or corporation or municipality? How do you know what mortgages or judgments are liens of record on the property? How do you know who has a right of way of record across the lot? In theory, at least, you could establish all these and other necessary facts for yourself by personally examining hundreds of documents on file in as many as 50 different public offices. But it would take you weeks or months and involve heavy expense. And when you got through, you would not have positive assurance that you had examined all the instruments or that some of those which you did examine had not been improperly or fraudulently executed. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles will do all this work for you in a fraction of the time and for a fraction of the cost. And it will then ensure the completeness and accuracy of its findings up to the minute. That is title insurance. If you invest in land, it is neither economical nor quite safe to overlook the protection of title insurance. North through the fertile San Joaquin Valley moved the party of Americans, trapping as they went. Now they realized even more clearly what kind of country they had found, what their discovery might mean. To them, right away, it meant another plentiful supply of beaver, and that was their business. And so it was that when they reached a point above what is now Sacramento on the American River, they had a valuable pack of furs. It was time to turn toward home. But the snows of winter had engulfed the high Sierras, and as the party tried the icy ascent... Jed, wait! i got to have some help here. This horse is mired in the snow up to her belly. Wait a minute, man. You can't pull her out. I haven't got the strength. My hands are numb. I'm afraid they're frozen. Here, I'll give you some help, Jed. You think we better go on? I don't think we can make it. Oh, I'm afraid this snow is too deep. What are we going to do? Can't go back. They'll put us in jail. Looks like we'll have to take a chance on that. It's suicide to try to go on here the next spring. Yeah, jail's better than freezing to death up here. You won't go to jail. We'll go back to the last camp on the river. You men can stay there and forage for your food. What do you mean, us men? What about you? I'm coming back up here, traveling light. I think I can make it across to Salt Lake and back. Are you crazy, man? Well, we're going to need help, supplies, more men. I'll get them. Not without me, you won't. I'm going to. All right, John. You can go and maybe one more. But the rest will have to stay and keep out of jail. <laughs> Up over the precipitous summits of the high Sierras, still snow-shrouded by winter, Jed Smith and two companions worked their way, fighting ice and snow, hunger and exhaustion. Once across the mountains, a long expanse of desert wastes further taxed their failing strength. Of the seven horses which started the trip, only one got through to Salt Lake. But finally, the men reached their destination, got supplies and a new company of about 20 men, and started back. This time, Smith chose the old route to the south, and after weeks of slow progress, they reached the Indian village on the Colorado. But there... John, there's something wrong. I think we better turn this raft around and go back. But, Jade, we're halfway across the river. What do you think's wrong? I don't know. I just got a feeling. Those Indians seem friendly enough, but not quite like before. Oh, you're imagining things. Well... Look, we'll be across the river in a minute. The others will be right after us. We'll be on our way to California, so don't... John, look. Look, back on the bank. Good Lord, they're attacking the other men. Look, a hundred of them. I knew it. I knew something was wrong. They've been told to stop us. Well, what do we do? Those men are being massacred. What can we do? Here out in the middle of the river, out of gunshot range. There's nothing we can do. Look, those red devils are men in the other raft. They're coming after us. They won't get us. We can't do anything about those other poor devils, but we can save ourselves. Men, there's only seven of us here. We haven't any provisions, nothing. But we're going to make a run for it. As soon as we touch the opposite shore, we're going as fast as we can for California. Most of his men massacred by the Mojave Indians. Without food or water, Smith and eight other men stumbled across the Mojave Desert and exhausted reached the blessed haven of the Estancia of the Mission San Gabriel. There, once again, Father Sanchez relieved their sufferings and furnished Smith with supplies. Leaving two of his men there... The leader quickly marched north to the American River to find his other party in need of fresh supplies. Well, there's only one thing to do. 
We can't move from here till we get supplies. I'm going into the mission at San Jose and get them. Well, they'll arrest you. Yeah, they already know we're here. Why they haven't arrested us, I don't know. But if you show up from San Jose... It can't be helped. There's nothing else to do. I'm Jedediah Smith. Oh, the Americano, huh? Well, we've been waiting for you, senor. Hola, hombre. Throw him in the jail. Jailer! Jailer! Well, you've got to tell the governor I want to see him. I tell him, senor. I tell him. But you see that every day and nothing happens. <laughs> Manana, maybe, senor. <laughs> there is no hurry here. Here he is, Your Excellency, the Americano. See, si, you may go. So, Senor Smith. You must pardon me, Your Excellency. I'm not dressed for such an honor. That pigsty you call a prison is not easy on clothes or looks. Come, come, Senor. It is I who have cause for complaint. You disregarded my order to leave the country. Very well, I did. I've not tried to conceal it. I tried to take my men out once, but I couldn't. I want to now, but you throw me in jail. And how do I know you will not disregard me again? You don't. But if you'll sell me supplies and allow me to try the northern route up to the Columbia River, I'll give you my promise that we'll leave. I'm afraid I shall require more than your promise this time, senor. In fact, I shall require a bond of $30,000 to ensure that you will be out of this province within two months. $30,000? Where could I ever raise that much money? I do not know, but raise it you must. Or I shall make other plans for you. Once again, American ship captains came to the young trapper's aid and secured his bond. Now, armed with new supplies and horses, the men started the hazardous trip over another expanse of unexplored country, north through the mountains of California to the Columbia River. The going was difficult in the extreme, and many a pack horse picking its way along the trailless mountainside was to slip and plunge screaming to the rocks far below. And finally, after weeks of struggle, the little band camped on the banks of the Umpqua River. Ahead was comparatively easy marching. In a few days, they would be at the Columbia and safety. Early in the morning, Jedediah Smith went out from camp to pick a trail on which to start the day's journey. As he was coming back... Jed! Jed! Hello! Jed! Who's that? Jed Smith! John Turner! What is it? What's the matter? I got a head of I... Speak uh, up, man. What is it? What's wrong? Engines attack. Just as we were breaking camp, I took a stick of wood and four of them got away... To warn you. Lord, what about the others? I don't know. I doubt if any of them got away. And they, they'll be coming for us next. One other man escaped the massacre at the Umqua and stumbled into the Hudson's Bay trading post at Vancouver on the Columbia River, one day ahead of Jedediah Smith and John Turner. Dr. John McLaughlin, who ran the post, took care of the Americans and talked to Smith. Well, son, you've done a great thing. You realize that you're the first man to reach California overland? Yes, and the first one to find a way up here from California. <laughs> You've connected up another country that was separated before. Yes, I know. You're the kind of man I'd like to have working for me. <laughs> no, nope, not me. I'm through with trapping now. I've done what I set out to do. Now I'm going to go back and start some other kind of business. Not so dangerous. Uh, what about all those furs you left back on the Umpqua? Uh, must have been a fortune you were bringing back. Yeah, easily $30,000 worth. You're just going to leave them there to rot? I guess so. I can't go back, not till I get to Salt Lake and pick up men and supplies. By then, they'll be worthless. I I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll send my men down and get them. And while they're there, they can bury your dead. Yeah. They'll bring the furs back here, and I'll pay you two-thirds of their full value. Well, that's more than a fair bargain, Doctor, considering that I've practically given them to you by what I said. That's all right. The Hudson Bay Company does business fairly. And that money might come in handy when you start that other business of yours. <laughs> Jedediah Smith returned to Salt Lake and later in 1830 quit the trapping business. Back in the frontier civilization of St. Louis, he formed a company to transport goods down the trail from St. Louis to the New Mexican town of Santa Fe. He started his first journey in the spring of 1831, guiding an immigrant train through the Indian country. Between the Arkansas and the Cimarron rivers, the caravan failed to strike water and thirst hung like a specter over the parched men and animals. Peter, I'm going on ahead. We got to find water or the whole train's done for. But, Jed, this here's Indian country. 
You can't go on alone. What are you talking about? After the experiences I've been through, this is nothing. Now, don't you worry, Peter. Just take care of the folks till I scare up a drink for us all. Out into the plains rode Jed Smith, alone. Seared by heat, tortured by thirst, mocked by mirages. He rode on and on. Until finally he reached the winding course of the Cimarron River. And there... There you are, Betsy, old girl. She looks mighty dry, but there's a water hole or two. Yep, there we are, over there a piece. Looks mighty cool and sparkling, too, don't it? Well, as soon as we get a taste to loosen us up a bit, we'll be heading back to bring the others. Oh, oh. Here we are, Betsy. Oh, there, now, don't try to drink the whole dry. You'll bust if you do. Here, let me get down there and have some, too. Yep, it's mighty good, all right, Betsy. Oh, oh! Betsy, old girl, come back here. What's the matter with you? Betsy! Scented by the horse, but unseen by Smith, two Indians hid behind a distant bush, drew arrows to bows, and... Oh! Oh! Oh, you... You red devils. Shooting a man in the back. (laughs) Thus, on the lonely banks of the Cimarron River died the gallant young man, then only 32, who had opened up California to American immigration overland. The personification of all those heroic virtues that were bred by the American frontier. An explorer who made contributions of tremendous value to the opening of the West, Jedediah Strong Smith stands without superior. His life story is of the ranchos. Title Insurance Service, comparable in speed and accuracy to that rendered in this community by the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, is available in but few other localities. And the rates charged for such services throughout the United States average considerably higher than those prevailing here. The company's vast physical plant, its advanced system of assembling and correlating facts, and entering them into accounts covering every square foot of land in the entire county, and its large, carefully trained organization enable it to issue more policies of title insurance than any other company in the world and to fill its orders promptly at substantial savings to its customers. And what's the story for next week, Frank? Next week, we'll trace the history of the Rancho La Puente and the colorful story of its owners, John Rowland and William Workman, whose names were given to the first party of Americans to come overland to settle California. It's a tale you'll want to hear. Until then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>